Hello loves, my name is Kepi Kate and welcome back to Clan Gen with Willow Clan. So last time, we did get some new members into the clan, a few kits that were orphaned after their mother passed from a harsh kidding. They fortunately were able to use Iris Star's milk from her previous litter to survive and they weren't infected. However, Iris Star has gotten much worse. Gust Paw is now an apprentice, but she has also gotten worse. And the cats, especially the medicine cats, are frantically trying to discover a cure for whatever this is. But River Jay is starting to believe that this is a spiritual sickness. Even though it has physical effects on the body, that this is something going on within the soul. So she is going to try and ask Star Clan for help. Right now, Iris Star is very sick. And in her small, fleeting moments of consciousness, she is questioning the ability to lead. She is too sick. She hasn't been able to do her duties. And Starling Dapple has had to take over for her. But Starling Dapple is happy to do it. That being said, Starling Dapple does wish she did have a few extra set of paws. Having to do the duties of a leader and a deputy is not easy, but she is happy to take it over for her leader who she loves and trusts. What's making things a little easier is the fact that River J confessed their love to Starling Dapple and they are now mates and in a happy relationship. River J is being worked hard. So hard that she feels she doesn't have time to even eat and so she is choking down her prey literally so she can get back to working on a cure. Raccoon Creek is in the medicine den helping as much as she possibly can. She survived the sickness. She's not sure how, but she's going to do everything within her power to help River J find a cure. Rot Whisker is trying to keep the mood light. He's very positive in his skill, confident in his skill even, and so he's hoping that by sparring with some clan mates, he can take some eyes off of what's going on in the medicine den and keep the warriors strong. Elrun is going to take a private moment to go to the dirt place, but her mind is filled with worry. Grouse Skip wants to spend some time alone today. It's so hard to see clan mates that he grew up with struggling to survive through the sickness and it's very hard on him mentally to see them suffer. Gust Pa, despite feeling so sick, is training as hard as they can, hoping that their will can simply push this curse away. Grey Pa was tasked with lining the nest with fresh moss today and she is happy to do it. She wants to make sure that her own mother is comfortable in trying to recover and especially the medicine cat beds have been refreshed because they're already overworked as it is. Melting Paw is sharpening their claws. They're in pain, they're struggling, and so they're just pulling their claws through the bark of the trees around the den and the camp, hoping that it will distract them from the pain. Model Fur is giving advice to the younger cats, telling them to be strong in the face of this great danger. Jump Kit is hoping that they will dream of Shard Slip who will tell them a new story from Star Clan. And Milk Kit, who is a little too young perhaps to hear some of the stories that Model Fur is telling, is eavesdropping on those stories, but is encouraged by what he is hearing. Those are our few cats of Willow Clan. We have now come to the 24th moon, and Starling Dapple has started to believe they are meant for something greater, that perhaps they are meant to lead. They have taken on the duties of both a leader and a deputy, and so this may be getting to their head, but I do think that Starling Dapple is simply feeling confident in her own abilities. Rot Whisker and Model Fur have become mates? Elrun Sprain has healed, Raccoon Creek slipped on some rocks and their leg was dislocated, oof. Graypaw has gotten green cough. Our one healthy kit is now sick. Melting Paw's claw wound has healed, but they'll always carry evidence of the incident on their pelt. So they will have a scar. And it looks like the blackberry has gone bad, but the medicine cats can go collect more. 
So due to the injury that Melting Paw did have right at the beginning of their apprenticeship, they will have to go on a patrol alone. Melting Paw may be smaller, alone, and half its weight, but the fox has a prize they're willing to fight for with a prayer to Star Clan. They throw themselves into battle. The fox, already stuffed full of venison and unwilling to lose blood over it, leaves the kill with a grumble. Melting Paw, despite everything, despite being injured, despite despite being sick throws themselves at this fox and ends up getting food for the rest of the clan that is incredible it is now the 25th moon and as we do on every fifth moon we check on the status of our sick cats and see if the infection is spreading iris star has taken a turn for the absolute worst river jay comes in to check on her and iris star hisses who are you? What are you doing? And River Jay is confused. She explains, and River Jay, remember? Iris Star doesn't remember. She recognizes Raccoon Creek, but not River Jay. As her kits come in to check on their mother, she only recognizes Gust Paw and Melting Paw, but not Gray Paw. She is having severe memory loss. The mushrooms are growing out of her in more places, on her shoulder, on her back, down her tail, behind her ear, it's spreading. She can't walk anymore. She can barely move, and now she's losing memory. Gustpa, however, is feeling better. She believes that her ability to push through and fight and be strong against this curse is what has led her here. The mushrooms have not grown from her. Her fever is dwindling, and River Jay and Raccoon Creek believe that Gustpaw is no longer ill. So Gustpaw crawls close to her mother, Iris Star, and says, Please, Mom, fight. Fight, try and get up, try and walk, remember. She's desperate for her mother to come through this, but it may already be too late. I just want to make a note that I rolled 99% for this cat to get cured, so. Melting Paw has come out of their fever with no problem. River Jay and Raccoon Creek are not even sure if Melting Paw even had the sickness that Gust Paw and Iris Star and Raccoon Creek had and have but whatever it is it's gone and they're happy about it because that's less cats they have to look over and they can focus all of their efforts into iris star who is fading quickly no other cats seem to exhibit any symptoms and so all efforts are placed on helping iris star recover it's now the 26th moon and it's a very special day because the new orphaned kits will now be made into apprentices Starling Dapple announces that she will be taking Jump Paw as her very own apprentice. Milk Paw sits with their new mentor. I Ooh, we're gonna have to fix that actually. So this is the first time I think I'm gonna have to really adjust something and change a mentor. Iris Star cannot mentor, obviously, so we're gonna have to fix that in the cat list, which I will do quickly, but we'll go ahead and read the rest. Rot Whiskers Paw is now thorn free, but Gray Paw has died of green cough. In all of the efforts to help Iris Star come through this mysterious sickness, Gray Paw did not get enough help. Iris Star, after being told that Gray Paw was her daughter, nuzzles against the fur of their dead child, their kit, their Gray Paw and feels as though the world has ended. One day the clan will have kittens who never knew Graypaw in life, but Iris Star vows to ensure Graypaw's memory will live on through them and pledges that they will not forget their precious child again, no matter how bad the sickness riddles their brain, they will not forget their daughter. Gustpaw feels numb to the news of Graypaw's death how could they ever walk through a world without their sibling at their side? Some of the memories shared at Graypaw's vigil make Gustpaw laugh, some cry, most of them do both, but Gustpaw marvels at what a special cat 
Grey Paw was. Melting Paw fusses gently with Grey Paw's fur, hiding the evidence of what killed them. Oh, good. Okay, I kept reading. I was worried that Melting Paw killed their own sibling. <sighs> they want to remember them as they were in life, not like this. Melting Paw keeps searching for tasks to do, for cats to comfort, for distractions against the hole in their heart as they fight to keep the grief from consuming them. And the medicine cats notice that more and more of the herbs are going bad. They agree that they're gonna have to start going on patrols separately in order to find more herbs. But River Jay has noticed that this kind of rotting of the herbs is very odd. It's happening quicker than usual. And she sees that mushrooms are starting to grow on the shelves where she's been keeping the herbs. During the ceremony where the apprentices are given to mentors, Starling Dapple admits that she wanted Milkpaw to be a warrior, and she had hoped for Iris Star to recover so that she could mentor Milkpaw. And Milkpaw takes a moment with this information. And before Starling Dapple can announce who the mentor is supposed to be, Milkpaw says, then I want to learn how to heal. I want to learn how I could help. And so Milkpaw, instead of being a warrior's apprentice, will now be a medicine cat apprentice and help River Jay and Raccoon Creek in learning about this sickness, this curse, in hopes of helping the clan. So Jump Paw, for their first patrol, is sent out alone so that they can be assessed on whether they are good enough to even be a warrior at all. And Jump Paw manages to bring back a nice catch to show off to everyone. So Jump Paw is going to be a formidable warrior in the future. Now on the 27th moon, Starling Dapple approaches Iris Star. Iris Star barely remembers Starling Dapple, but with a few moments of explanation, a few memories flicker in her mind. Starling Dapple says, I believe it is time for our young apprentices to become warriors, but I didn't want to do this without your permission. They talk briefly, Iris Star falling in and out of consciousness, but the two together find names that they wish to give to these new warriors. And so after following the progress of Gustpaw for moons, the two feel that it is finally time for them to have their warrior name, and they decide that the name granted should be Gust Noise in honor of their composure. They next move on to Melting Paw and decide that Melting Heart would be the best name, and they will be celebrated for their intelligence. Melting Heart. Oh, I love that. I'm sorry, what? What is this? Rumors reach your clan that a loner Mira has died recently. Who are these cats? <laughs> what? What? Is this new? This must be new. I don't recognize this at all. So this is what the unknown residents are. I see. Mira, you are beautiful, by the way. But running? I don't remember running. What? I think we need to keep a closer eye on what's going on outside the clan, actually. So now that Melting Heart is a full-fledged warrior, they will be sent out on their own for a hunting patrol. And once again, one of our cats wants to eat the food they caught since they're by themselves, but Melting Heart resists the temptation to make sure the elders are fed. And on the 28th moon, time has taken its toll and Rot Whisker has noticed themselves slowing down. They've worked timelessly for many moons, but it is time for them to retire. Rot Whisker has seen this clan build up to what it is now. Now he's tired and he wants to rest next to his mate, Model Fur. Grouse Skip gives Milkpaw a pretty cicada wing and they decide to wear it in their pelt. That is so cute. <laughs> Iris Star tells themselves they can't let these feelings consume them. Instead, they have to learn to live with it. Iris Star is really struggling now. Both Gust Noise and Melting Heart decide that instead of grieving for their lost sister, that they are going to make sure they work every single day 
the best that they can be in honor of her. So both Grouse Skip and Elrun go out on a border patrol and they come across a cat, a web clan cat hiding up in a tree. The cat yowls a warning, wait, don't come here. But the cats are too determined to chase off this rogue and before they can do anything, a large dog comes charging out of the woods and kills Grouse Skip before they can get away. On the 29th moon, it doesn't feel real for Starling Dapple, who stares at Grouse Skip's body blankly, waiting for this horrible nightmare to end. The world seems dim and lifeless, and Starling Dapple keeps close to their clan, seeking out the comfort and company they provide. It's the 30th moon, and we're going to have to see what happens with all of our cats in the next episode, because I am all out of time. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, tickle and poke that like button, subscribe to join our family if you haven't already, and jingle the bell to get notified of when I post any clan gen videos. Also, feel free to join Discord or follow me on Twitch if you want to hang out with me on other platforms. I love you guys. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next week to discover what happens with Iris Star if she recovers or if she falls.